So Allah, He sent the instruction manual and He sent the Prophet to teach us practically how to follow that guidance. And when you study the Qur'an, and when you read the Qur'an, an amazing thing happens. Your heart becomes very happy. And you become very convinced that this is from God. Like some other books. And I have read many books before I became Muslim. I studied many different religions. And I read the books of many different religions. In fact, I remember one religion was telling me that the earth, the earth is resting on an elephant, which is standing on a tortoise, which is swimming in the sea. Yeah, this one religion I came across said this. Does this sound like a religion from the one who created the universe? Well, it sounds like a someone was thinking, well, how can I tell my child these things and they made this bedtime story? Huh? Or like when I used to study Greek and Latin at school, we used to study ancient Greek and Latin, and with that we would study the stories of the gods of the ancient Greeks. So one of the stories of the gods of the ancient Greeks was that there was one goddess, she was breastfeeding her baby, the baby god, and it bit her nipple and the milk came out and that's the Milky Way. Does that sound like a book that's from God? No, it doesn't. It does not sound like a book that's from God. When you read the Qur'an though, what do you find? It is a mentioning things that scientists have only begun to discover today. Have not the unbelievers in Surah Al-Anbiya, the meaning, have not the unbelievers seen that the heavens and the earth were joined together, then they were rent asunder and we created from water every living thing? Subhanallah, will they not believe? The Qur'an mentions how Allah turned to the heavens when it was dukhan, smoke. And many, many amazing things the Qur'an mentions that nobody could have known 1,400 years ago. So now you see, how does Islam bring peace? First of all, there is one God who created the universe. And God is not like anything in this universe. He is unique. He is eternal and ever-living, wise and powerful. And you know what? That makes sense. And I feel at peace with that. Because my reason and my belief, they are not fighting each other. And God has sent guidance. And when I look at this guidance, the Qur'an, this book you can see, must be from God. And you look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of God, and when he lived his life, you feel at peace because you will see that this man is the real example of how to be a good human being. And this you see when we know our aqidah, and I'm only mentioning some few things. The more you study, and the more deeply you look into this belief of the Muslim, whether it is the belief in Allah and the angels, or the books and the scripture, or the day of judgment, which really we think about it. I know someone who used to be an atheist, but even when he was an atheist, he didn't believe in God. He used to say, you know what, but I really, it would be really good that there's a day of judgment. Because there are so many bad people who do so many bad things and they don't seem to get punished for it. And it will be so good that there is a day of judgment when they get what they deserve. Yes. Because this is the logic, the reason. It makes sense. Because we have within us this natural desire to see justice. So the day of judgment, really, it makes sense. And that there is a place of reward and a place of punishment. A reward for the people who do good and punishment for the people who do bad. So you see the belief of Islam. In fact, when you study it, you will find nothing that is in contradiction with the sound reason. And the qadr, and the divine decree, and the destiny. Really makes so much sense. So when the believer, their mind has acquired this knowledge, their heart becomes peaceful and at rest. And really I am mostly sure, mostly, I don't want to say in every case, but when you find some Muslim who is very sad or very depressed or in a very bad mental state, 
When you study that person, you will find, in fact, at the bottom of it, there is something wrong, something weak in their belief. Something weak or something wrong. And you will maybe find they are, they have some corrupt belief at the Not always, I don't want to say every time. But really, many times you will find this is the case. And the more strong your knowledge, and the more firm your belief, true belief here, because I have to say, unfortunately, many people who call themselves Muslims have many very wrong beliefs that in fact even contradict Islam. But the true belief brings the true peace and the true happiness. And this is how Islam brings true peace to society. Because when we have peace in ourself, and then we establish that peace in our family, then that peace will become established in society. And because Islam is the Qur'an and the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa it is the guidance from Allah, the one who created us and the one who knows us. When we practice Islam and when we implement Islam, see Islam is not just a belief. Islam is not saying, my name is Muhammad, my name is Aisha, my father used to pray. No. Islam is something we have to practice and we have to implement in our lives. Then we will see how our life will change and our family's life will change. And in fact, we will see how the life of the society will change. Now, brothers and sisters, I mentioned this is a type of spiritual sense that I am mentioning. But I also want to mention now some practical things. Everything in Islam is practical. Everything that we do as Muslims is going to help to make your life a peaceful life. In fact, I will say this without any doubt. Every single problem that we have, every single problem that we have, and I don't exclude any problem, all our problems, individually and collectively, they come from our disobeying Allah and abandoning the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Without a doubt. All of our problems come from this. That's what our problems are due to. And the more we implement Islam, the more happy and the more at peace we will be. But it's the true peace, brothers and sisters. We are all, every one of us, the sons and daughters of Adam, and Adam was made from dust. There is no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab, over a black, over a white, except in one thing.